Hello, welcome to Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. I want you to watch this video and it will tell you about the man we are going to talk to today. I know you will not be disappointed. We have a lot to talk about today. Let's watch this. We'll be right back. Born in the 50s, the man, popularly known as Ambassador D.K. Osei, was raised by his parents in the Ashanti region. As a young boy, he had admission to the Achimota School and later entered the University of Ghana for his tertiary education. While at Legon, D.K. Osei was elected and served as the president of the Student Representative Council from 1972 to 1973 with Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas as his secretary. He joined the Foreign Service in 1976 and has had a distinguished career in the service, working closely with a number of heads of states, including Dr. Hilali Mann and Jerry John Rollins. In 2001, he was appointed secretary to the then president, John Ajikum Kufour. Ambassador D.K. Osei tells the rest of his story on Footprints Now. Now you know who we are talking about, Ambassador D.K. Osei. Ambassador, I salute you. <laughs> Sam, I rather salute you. Oh. You know, your man, Bernard, likes to say, Sam, you are a big man. <laughs> no, you are a bigger man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you. So yeah, good to see good, you. Good to You're see looking you well. See. Well, I'm getting better. Yes, yes, yes. Keeping yes. alive. We thank God. We thank, thank God. We thank, thank you. God. Thank you. So those of you who don't know Ambassador D.K. will say, let me advise you. Just take a book. You know, we used to have note one, note two, and note three. Take note three. I told the younger ones, they don't even know what note three is. <laughs> <laughs> the exercise book, just take it with a pen and sit down and watch. There's a thing or two you are going to learn. You've never heard it anywhere before. Thank you very much for making time. Sam, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bless. Um, so, we, we've always known Ambassador D.K. or say, as a professional, somebody that's worked in the foreign service, somebody that's worked around politicians. But there's the other side of Ambassador D.K. Osei, which I, I didn't hear from you, but I heard from others, that you were, you were a good athlete, apparently. Um, and you were into student politics, yeah, from Achimota School to, to University of Ghana, and then and then the, f the universities you attended outside and, right. and, and you also spoke French, you still do? I studied, oh, I do. I studied in France. I did my second master's in France. In France? That's right. Charlie, now you are a big man. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know, we the French, we dropped it very early because my French master used to threaten me. You know, I was very fortunate. In fact, a lot of what has happened in my career can be attributed to French. Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, lovely. As we get into yeah, the, yeah, we'll the talk professional about. life, we'll mm. talk about it. In fact, I spend a lot of time as a professional simultaneous interpreter. Wow. As a side job, lovely. whilst I was still a career diplomat. Mm. But we can get into that nice later. Nice one. Well, that man used to say, Coco Tere, Coco Tere. <laughs> he say your head like Coco Tere. <laughs> so what is that? <laughs> So, so you were born in Accra? No, I was born in Kumasi. Kumasi. Born in Kumasi, uh, and I went to primary school in Kumasi. Which primary school? You remember? Saint. Oh, of course I do. Mm -hmm. In fact, strangely, last week my eldest brother brought me my class one school report. I'll show it to you. What? Yes, class one school report, signed by my father. Class one school report. Class one school report. We used to call it terminal report. Terminal report. That's it. It was very colorful. Lovely. <laughs> I hadn't seen it before. Wow. So I went to St. Joseph's Roman Catholic. And where is that? Oh, you know Ashtown? Yeah, Ashtown, yeah. Yeah. And some very famous people went to St. Joseph's. Wow. Ashtown, in the heart in of the, the city. In the heart of the city. And you used to live in Ashtown too? We lived in a place called African Bangalows. So you in can Rome. understand. In Rome. In Rome. Our house is the first one. Yeah. You are Pierre. You are Pierre. If I, um, if I, the MD of the, uh, C, chairman of the bank. Bank, yes. Uh, Alan Chilmati. Yeah, because his father was, was a big man. Uh, the, the. Culture center. Uh, oh, 
Kwame Nyante cheese. Nyante cheese, yes. Could you Nyante cheese? Because I remember mm. you know, the reason as a child, mm. the only thing I remember yeah. about that street yeah. is Joe Appiah's wife was a white woman. That's they call her Auntie Peggy. That's right. So it's big bread I'm the telling right you. there. So I still there with the mansion. Yeah. Ours oh. was the first one as you are climbing mm. on the left, the MM1. Wow. So you pass as the Dopoku on the right, mm -hmm. then Joe Appiah. If I uh, just uh, do say just uh, stay large, Tremati. Big man. Oh, I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because you see, even Alan Tremati's father yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, was a, an icon. My father used to work with UAC, ah. with Kofi Annan's father. Uh -huh. And they were the first young manage, uh, indigenous managers. Uh -huh. To you enter know, the... by, by 20. Seven was ready. US, as you know, became, US was huge. Became Unilever. Uh, Unilever. Yeah. So that's the environment in which. Wow. I, and then, but good primary school. You know, they uh, don't go for you. Yes. The current and great minister mm -hmm. was my mate. Wow. Pukuche of. Uh, in primary school? Primary school. Mr. Pokuchi, former um, um, uh, finance ministry. You know, strangely, among the top three of our class, mm -hmm. the Greek minister, Pokuchi and I were top of the class all the time. But wow. Pokuchi was first more often than both of us. Uh, Mr. But we, we used to call him Hospa Faraday. Thank you. That, that is his real <laughs> name. <laughs> Mr. Bobuji, I salute you. Uh, I haven't seen him in a while, but he, well. you know he worked with Bank of Bank for Housing at some uh, point. That's why he and Savu Mafu are so close. Yes. I, so when Savu was the MD. Yes. I remember in, him from Bank for yeah, Housing yeah, yeah. and then later Serious joined Savu Mafu. So he just had his 70th birthday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we salute you if you're watching. So, um, Pokuche and um, who Betty. else in politics? Dr. Uh, Akutu was uh, Two years behind Aku, me. Akutu. My brother is two years behind oh, me. Oh, okay. So this is um, Akuto Efri. Oh, also Efri Akuto. Also Efri Akuto. That's right. Yeah, I just mixing the... That's uh, right. That's the, right. Yeah. A wonderful Greek minister in serious, my estimation. Serious. Cambridge trains. Cambridge? Cambridge, PhD. Oh, okay. So yeah. he did his PhD in University of Cambridge. Or Cambridge. How about his first degree? Uh, here. We're on campus together. Lovely. Serious guy. Oh, serious. Very serious. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about His real name is Big T. Big T. Big Tony Mills. Thank you. <laughs> because not a ball life for London, man. Charlie, bow tie. <laughs> I remember him when I was in university. Oh, I see. <laughs> Even the cars the man used to then, drive when we were in London. Then he was working for the International Coco. Yes. Yeah, Berner yeah. Street. Yes. Yeah, I mean, International Coffee, I think. Yeah, coffee. Okay. Coffee. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. Tell you, yeah, so you were not lonely even even when you entered no, into that no, that no, arena no, because no. It looks like you carried on your community of friends. That's right, along with me. That's why you could relate with everybody I so had, easily. I had friends all over the place. Primary school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You defined your career even at primary I school. I beg you. <laughs> oh, but that's 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 yeah. really admirable. Um so Primary school, St. Joseph's. Uh, it was Achimita. a Catholic school, right? Catholic school. But you Catholic? Very Catholic. Uh, exceedingly. No, exceedingly, I'm not sure. <laughs> but very, you very. Know, you should ask Kofi Kanata. <laughs> I'm not sure that. You know, oh, you love Kofi Kanata oh, too. Lovely. But I'm not sure that if, Kofi Wenja. If, if it gets physical, uh -huh. uh, I, I will get to heaven. <laughs> My father's younger brother, mm -hmm. he died, Reverend Osua Saose. He was a Catholic priest. Yeah. I have a cousin who is still a Catholic priest, wow. Reverend Ose Dia. Mm -hmm. He comes to do things for us. Wow. We're a very Catholic family. Oh, very, lovely. Very, very. lovely. In fact, my, father, my paternal grandfather mm -hmm. was called Ose Roman. Mm -hmm. Of course. Because at the beginning yeah. of the Catholic Church, entry yeah. into Kumasi, there were the leaders, very Catholic family. Oh, lovely. That must have also uh, uh, have um, infused a certain level of discipline in the way you, 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 you did things. You had no choice because I was chief Maseba. Maseba. Is it Roman Hill? You no, used no, to no. go to Roman Hill? At, at Achimata School. Oh, okay. okay. And we had a Catholic priest who was very strict, Reverend Father John O'Sullivan. Okay, so that's, that presumes oh, yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. Th that tells me that um, from that's um, St. Joseph's. Yeah, 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 yeah. You moved to Achimota, Achimota school. school. Yeah. Which year was this, if you remember? 63. 
1963. That's when you went to Form 1. That's when I went to Form 1. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I went to Form 1. Uh, at the time when Nkrumah was still... Yes. But, you know, the environment was such like that even the name of Nkrumah, you mention it in whispers. Wow. Because, you know, young pioneer and all that and all that. And, you know, it was... It's like that the day the coup occurred, I was serving mass with Father John. And I whispered to him that Kuma had been overthrown. He dropped the chalice oh, no. on the altar. But that's the environment in which the country yeah, was. Yeah. But Achimota at the beginning was excellent. You know, when you're coming from St. Joseph's and then you enter Achimota and they, you are introduced to opera, mm -hmm. Gilbert and Sullivan. Mm -hmm. Mikado. First year you see, uh, our headmaster was showing us 17th, 18th century literature, plays in his house, Moliere. Mm -hmm. It was such a great shock. Yeah. And so you were in a hurry to learn. to learn. And I was particularly interested in the opera. Good. I couldn't stay away from it because it was so new. Yeah. And then, you know, you got it into... It was like free movie. Oh, excellent. Because, you know, Kumasi, unless you go to Rivoli. Rivoli or Odeon. Or Odeon. Oh, and even uh, that, you have to run away. To r Rex. Rex. <laughs> so this was, you know, it was... And for me, it was a quick learning process. You see, in my case, I wasn't given a choice. Mm. I had to go to Achimota. Oh, really? You know, my aunt, uh, the late Mrs. Chris Acton, you know Ophelia? Ophelia Chris Acton of uh, the BBC. mother. Mm -hmm. went to Achimota with her brother, Jage. Mm -hmm. And my eldest brother, who's a lung surgeon, Clement, mm -hmm. was feeling his common and transform. And Ophelia's mother, Auntie Grace, turned up. And my brother had failed to poke away. He said, what, are you crazy? We, you, you, we all went to Achimota, and you are all going to Achimota. She didn't like Opokwari. She preferred Achimota. <laughs> that's how Pukwari was, was good. Then my father was a board chairman at Pukwari. Hey. Yes, but my aunt got my brother to choose Achimota. And that's a lot. There were five of us boys. All of us went to Achimota. All of us were in Cadbury House. Wow. That's, that's kind of a long story short. Your father so, must really must be, must be pissed off. But we turned out well. So you can't complain. Mm -hmm. You know, the eldest is a lung surgeon. The one who just, who we just lost, Albert. Yeah. His work is well bank all his life. That's correct. I'm the third boy. The Minister for National, Minister for Planning. Monetary and Evaluation. Yes. It comes after me. Oh. The one after him is a university professor. Where is US, he? Uh, Delaware. 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 In the US. Yeah, Delaware. Wow. Then things things really worked together well for the family. Very. Very, very, very for which you thank God. So occasionally, do you meet to thank God? All the time. All the time. Minimum once every two years. Wow. Well, we just met last year. Hmm. We have sisters. There are four of them. Oh, you have sisters? Oh, yeah. There are nine of just us. five boys. No, 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 no. There are nine of us. Oh. All of them alive. It was a clan. Them. You know, in fact, I have a picture in my Sydney area. I call it Osei clan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very close. Mm. We're very so, close. 63, we come back to Achimota School. Right. A young boy from Kumasi, you know, you know, travels to Accra and then dumped in the middle of nowhere. At right. the time, there were trees all over the place. Right. And the school right. hanging right. in somewhere. Yeah. How was your first ex experience in Achimota School? You see, I was not lost because my, my brother was in from five and in my house, oh. Albert. He later became uh, deputy senior prefect. And then he was very muscular, and everybody was afraid of him, including Jerry John Rollins. So Jerry was your mate? He or? was two years ahead of me. Oh, OK. So I had full protection. Wow. So I didn't feel lost out at all. Oh, nice. My brother was in my house. He was, he was, everybody knew him as a bully, and you didn't dare touch me. Wow. So all my friends then came under his protection. Uh -huh. So I didn't get lost. So I, had, I was given opportunity to fish out what I wanted to learn, you know, cricket, hockey, tennis. So, so first year in Achimota, who are some of the people you met who are still in public life? Oh, hmm. My mates, of course, Pugabra. 
Oh, Spio was your mate? Yes. He's another Dadaba. Complex. Father was ambassador. You remember? Uh, of course, my mate, uh, Isaac Osei, uh -huh. MD of Tor. Tor. Great. Another uh, Dadaba, I must uh, say. You know what I mean? No, we not Shepe. Oh, we have lots of, I mean, mm. Dr. David in Cancer Germany is a uh, surgeon. Uh, Reku Robe was not. He was a year behind me. Oh, okay. But in Cadbury House, too. Mm. Oh, my year group. You can't, I mean, mostly surgeons. Urakatete, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Poku, uh, Major Okai. Was Joris Watsonberg your was mate? a year behind me. Oh, okay. He became game prefect after me mm -hmm. when I was a young Wow. Prefect. Joris was a year behind me. Oh, we have plenty. I mean, we have uh, all sorts in my class. Uh, those who are naughty. Let me let me try and remember. We, Am like, we like the naughty ones. Ambassador Naji was my mate. Ambassador Naji. Naji. He was director of state protocol to President Kufo. Oh, okay. Okay. Ambassador Ifuya Bene was my mate. Mm -hmm. uh, Asante Seji. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, Amaki Gloria Kisei. Okay, so, so that took you through Achimota, That's it. and um, you eventually did up to form five, and then came back Six to set form, right? And then you became a games prefect, right? Who were some of the other prefects? Do you remember? Oh, our, our, our senior prefect was uh, Tengi. Tengi is an accountant. He lives in uh, England. The girl's senior prefect was she, her maiden name's Himans Mensa. She's a surgeon, oh. Henrietta. Uh, I, I don't recall. I don't recall it. Okay. Okay. Yawakoto, you know, Yawakoto used to be MD of Bust, used to be MD of Tor, and then went to uh, Safeline. Safeline, Doctor Akoto. Doctor Akoto yeah. is one of my mates. Oh, not you are not related to. Oh him, no no no, okay. he's from the Volta region. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He used to be called Innocent. <laughs> Innocent Akoto. <laughs> So nice. those were some of the prefects. Uh, yeah. Uh, and your Kwesikote. Ambassador Kwesikote. Uh, Lovely. Vice President of the AU Commission. Mm -hmm. My mate to Apasis. Wow. Yeah, there are plenty wow. of them. All so of tell them. me about your own experiences in Hachimota School. You know, I was... What did you take out of Hachimota School? Culture. Hmm. Understanding the world. Because, you know, in Hachimota... You met all sorts. In fact, my, in my classroom, we had the, the son of the U.S. ambassador mm -hmm. and the son of the High Commissioner to Canada, the Canadian High Commissioner in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we had people from the north, from the Volta region, from the east, and we were like a family. So I, I, I acquired culture. But most of all, I, I got exposed to the very many things that you don't learn in class, mm. you know, like like life, how to how to lead, and how to live with people with different backgrounds. I I was lucky because you know when I was going to when I went to Form One, one of the best friends of my eldest brother, Clement, was Professor Mills. The late Professor Mills. Mm. So my brother handed me to Fifi because he said I was too naughty mm. and that he needed somebody to take care of me. Late Professor Mills was a great sportsman. Many people would not know that. So mm. on Saturdays, he used to come and take me from Achimata to Sabah Hall. And I used to accompany him to watch him play cricket, hockey, soccer, and so on and so forth. Mm. And that got me glued to sports very early. In fact, my classmates would tell you that after a while, it was difficult to get me to come to class. I was hey. in the sports field all the time. Wow. I was in the sports field all the time. And I, I loved sports. Hmm. Athletics. Yeah. Cricket. So Ashimota gave you the opportunity to express your talent. I became sportsman of the year. Wow. 1968, 1969. I became a national athlete when I was in Form 5. Wow. What, Tri what triple jump. Triple jump. And I stopped doing triple jump for Ghana only when I became SRC president because I didn't have the time. Oh. In 1971, I set the Legon triple jump record. I'm told that it's still there. I was very busy. 
as a young boy. So, meaning that after Axwater School, Legon. you went to Legon. Right. Um, which, what, what program did you do um, uh, Legon? You know, in our time, you were allowed to uh, take three, if you were doing arts, three subjects. Then if you got honours in any of them, we did what we call BA honours in only one subject. I had three subjects, including French. And I got three honours, but I chose to do BA French honours mm -hmm. graduate. Oh, okay. So you ended up with a, on, an honours uh, degree, degree in, in French. French. The international relations came later. Straight away. Right, right. Wow. So, so University of Ghana. It's exciting. Uh, it was another bout of happiness. You know, in my first year, there were two levels in which I was operating. I was elected to be the Secretary General of the Amalgamated Clubs. The Amalgamated Clubs, it's a uniform platform for all the sports bodies on campus. The various campuses or just in the Legon. Ghana. Okay. So uh, the representative on it is called the Secretary General. And I was the representative of students in, in the first year. In FUE, as FUE, we used to call it. FUE. FUE. Yes. First, FUE. first year university boy. And the president of the American club then yeah. was the late pre President Mills. Wow. So we started attending conferences. So, first so year. you knew President Mills very well. well. Very well. Then in that same year, I was elected appointed by the NOOCs to be the chairman of the, what we call the anti-loan scheme committee. Because mm -hmm. then the Buzia government was trying to introduce a loan scheme. To, you know, before that, yeah. we were just given allowances, yeah. we lived like lots, but they were trying to introduce a loan scheme for students. And the whole student population was against it. Against. But I was made the chairman of the anti-loan scheme. To lead the route. So I was going to Kebas and university just to organize demonstrations yeah. against the Buzia government. <laughs> you know what a lot of my friends didn't do. So I was there. now that we have come to Legon, uh -huh. I think we'll, for for the sake of time, yeah. we'll, we'll just take our break okay. now, and then when we take the break, we'll come back and then talk about life Other in Legon, and then you know. So we'll be right back after this break. Thank you. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprints on City TV, and. Um, I'm here with Ambassador DK Osei. Ambassador, it's um, it looks like the experience you have you had in the University of Ghana um, is something that you really put premium value on. I do. You was from Achimota School, the culture of Achimota School, as you you rightly said, and the things you learned from Achimota. Looks like you went to University of Ghana prepared to be a leader. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tell me more about University of Ghana. You know, I haven't spent a year during my first year campaigning against the government. I'd sold my candidature already, already to the campus. So when I stood election to be SRC president, it was a straightforward. So you came first year and you're already campaigning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'd, I'd been elevated to the position of chairman of the anti-loan scheme committee. A first year student? Yeah. Which was <laughs> But that's that's curious. Yeah. Maybe yeah. somebody knew something others didn't know. Well, we had we had been working at UN Students Association together uh -huh. with a lot of the uh -huh. radical student uh -huh. leaders uh -huh. like uh, Adudu Kantama. Yeah, that's we call we used to call it Gunsa. Gunsa. Right. Gunsa, right. yes. Yeah. We, yes, we yes, worked yes. with Isaac and who were some more them was so the students knew me a bit. Right. So you came in and like so oh, this guy let's 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 draw him. And in. then I decided very early on the team, you know, uh, Chambers was my secretary when I was SRC president. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we had a team backing us from afar. The guy in the champion mini is called mm. Dr. Osei Tupuku. He, he was a diplomat, now he's full time a champion mini. And the a Greek minister by the end of the first year, I had formed a committee mm -hmm. to prepare me for the election in the second year. Wow. So, you know, I had no difficulty with funding. And, you know, Volta Hall was fully behind me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you were the son of a rich man. Oh, I beg you. No, 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 I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Rich man. Hey, look at your team. Uh, 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 Dr. Akutu, a free year. <laughs> Rich man's son, uh, all the people, Sefe. Oh, no, no. no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no. And it was a period in which campus was very active intellectually. Mm -hmm. Where two groups of the leftists and the 
others, the new liberals. We had Akil Akbar, Professor Akil Akbar, Kwesi Butri, and them on one side. Then you had Professor Fulson and Professor Safu, PAB and so So we had a very active... They were all your... No, they were lecturers. Oh, they were lecturers. When I was, I was taught by... Professor Sansa. Oh, he was one of my best friends. Wow. He taught me... Uh, so, political history of so when you went to Legon in the late 60s, it must be? No, no, 70. 70. Okay, 1970. 71. 71. Okay, at the time, Professor Ansan was already teaching. Oh, he was teaching French. Oh, yeah. It was right. whilst we were there that he moved to communication. communication. Yeah. But he was a brilliant lecturer. <laughs> he got <laughs> me interested in the political economy of Francophone Africa. Mm. And I've been glued to it ever since. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Professor P. A. V. Ansan could could get you interested in anything. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> I mean, he, he lectured without notes. Yeah. And, you know, the, the quotations used to fuse literally from his ear. Well, so those of you who don't know P.A.V. Ansa, well, how do I say? The father of Dr. A.C. Ansa. <laughs> That's the closest I can say now. Yeah, yeah brilliant. lovely. Yeah. So apart from, and then you, you mentioned uh, Professor Aki, Aki Lakpasoya. Aki didn't actually teach me. Professor Boche taught me when I did postgraduate, mm. trade investment law. Oh, so you did your first postgraduate in Legon? In Legon. Right. Wow. Now, where you're there? Charlie, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but I met Professor Boche much earlier. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as a student leader, you, were, you had the opportunity to attend a lot of conferences. Yeah. I, I went to the World Assembly of Youth in Manchester. I went to the Commonwealth Youth Meeting in Zambia. Then I went to Dar es Salaam for a meeting on African, all African Students Union with the whole team. That's when I met Professor Bochi. Wow. But he had a group of sharp leftist lawyers, mm -hmm. Shibji, Nebudere, who had written books on Africa. Were they Ghanaian? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, Nebudere was from Uganda. Shibji was half Indian. But these were his, the people he, mm -hmm. he hung out with. And yeah. he introduced us to the literature. And you know, in our time, you couldn't possibly become SRC president if you didn't spew some, some leftist some. radical talk. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Aluta continua. Aluta continua. And then soon after, uh, Buzia was overthrown. So the student front became extremely active yeah. against the military government. Because you were agitating at oh, the time. The and you led it. Yes, I had so to. So you kicked Buzia out. People died. The process. Yeah. I remember a Sudanese student died, and we so. On, but we had a, we had a good team, you know. Uh, the late PV, yeah, uh, Sarah Mensa. PV or being yeah, Kwame Sarah Mensa. Who yeah. became minister in the Bugri. Oh, yes. From that. From that it, time. Uh, yeah, has been a, a tormentor Kofi, since then. Eh? Kofi Gan Kofi Juma. Yes. The CEO. Of, Kofi Juma. Yes. Yes. Atudadze, oh. Who became chief of staff to Rollins. Yes. We had a. You know, they were all involved. They were all student leaders. No then. wonder Guzia uh, had oh, <laughs> lovely. I was open-minded, you know, genuine, you know, anti-military dictatorship, you know, thinking about Ghana. We had nothing to lose. Hmm. Had nothing to lose. So, so you eventually got into the um, SRC thing. I became SRC president. You remember the. Your election? It was, in fact, one of the pictures that I sent you, I was in cloth. That was the day of the election. I, it was on the campaign platform. But uh, some of the people think that you had sponsorship. From where? From somewhere outside no, of campus. But I've told you where the funding came from. The a champion mini, mm -hmm. the current champion mini, Dr. Osaito Tupoku, who studied at Tufts University, and the current Greek minister, then we had a friend who we call FUE Millionaire. Because when he came to first day, I was already working. Mm -hmm. These were my friends. And I didn't need, and in fact, those days would have been out of the ordinary for you to have external sponsorship. Mm -hmm. There was no need to be sponsored. Yeah. And the campaign was not like what we see now. You really didn't need much. You only needed was to get. Uh, you remember some of the contestants at the time? Joris was the main one. Joris Wattenberg? Yes. He didn't mention that. You know, <laughs> he was, came from Commonwealth Hall. Okay. At the beginning of the campaign... And you are, you are in which hall? Aquafo, gentleman. Oh, Please, okay. Please, I'm not one of those... <laughs> you know who was my campaign manager when we started? Mm -hmm. Professor Kwame Nawe. 
Oh, yeah. In the middle, he abandoned me and joined the Watenberg campaign. Oh, no. And had a, a, a flag, flashy campaign with Thank cars. You. Me, I was campaigning on foot. <laughs> Watenberg was working at the castle. You at know? The time. <laughs> and he had also made money in the long vac with his place. With their place, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. He yes, was yes. making, because most of it was sponsored. But when we earned the money, we shared. <laughs> wow. It was a good period. I mean, they forged, uh, they so, the So you mentioned Wattenberg. You remember uh, any other person who? No. Okay. Uh, it's been a while. Sabo Menu mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was one of the people uh -huh. who were candidates. Beatrice Metlununu eventually opted to be treasurer. Okay. Uh, and then you became president. the president. Do you recall some of the high points of your SRC presidency? Ooh. Main high points were days when you had to lead demonstrations when you had ammo tanks waiting mm -hmm. for you. And the only way you could pull the students along was that they saw you on the front line. So at this time, Kutua Champon was head right. of state. Right. So you attend. I'll, I'll fire on him. Fire, the fire on Kutua Champon. I'm telling you. But it was too early in the day. You see, they, in the early days, they were very oppressive. I remember one day, we had a program called Youth Forum, and we'd gone to criticize the government. We left the NUCS meeting on campus, then I came home, then I was staying at Laboni. Yeah. By 11 a.m., they had arrested all of them. Kantamaklo, uh, Sarah Mensa, uh, Johnny Kwajo, who became ambassador to Togo, etc. Then there were no mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So I called the presidency. Then there was, then minister in charge of information, I'll try and remember his name. He was next to General Kutua Champo. I mean, he was sitting next to him. So I got through to him. But that's how powerful student movement was. I said to him, I understand you have arrested the student leaders. I am home. Don't blame me if this country bends in the next hour. In 30 minutes, they had, drove, they, they had driven all of them to my house. <laughs> no, those days, the student leadership had credibility. Yeah. And when we had a press conference, it was taken very seriously. You know, there were no political parties apart from the trade union. And we were backed by the trade union. So somebody called D.S. Boati, who worked with the PNDC, who was then in the trade union, who worked very closely with us. Yeah, D.S. Boati and Kofordia. That's right. Yeah. And we used to plan our demonstrations with the trade union. Wow. So sometimes we'll click in the trade unions and the students are on strike, the professional bodies on strike. The whole country was dead. Wow. And then, and then you, you, you really, really felt your leadership and the impact. You know, it's a shame that I couldn't pursue it. Because <laughs> once... Pursue means... I mean, it was very active politically. Okay, you didn't it's move into... Many of my friends would have assumed yeah. that I would have gone into politics. Mm -hmm. well, everything showed. Yeah, but you join the foreign service, you can't do politics. Good. Did you, did you, so after SRC... I um, went abroad to study at the University of Dakar. Dakar, and that I, was a scholarship, right? That's right. Okay. Foreign government scholarship. So I came back to finish the final year. Mm -hmm. National service, then immediately joined the foreign service. So you, where did you do your national service? Who? Oh, Who? Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> I was teaching at Ola Girls Secondary School. Mercy. <laughs> girls Secondary School. Mercy. My bungalow was next to the girls' dormitory. Oh, okay. And at 5 a.m., they would go jogging and come and exercise behind my window. Ah. I ran away. <laughs> I moved to National Ma Service Ma Maoli Boy. Estate. Uh -huh. Because I was teaching part time in Maoli, but who was. Ula. Was yeah. fantastic. Wow, at the time. I didn't know the Volta right. region very well. I spent my time traveling to Vuti, Keta, Agbozume, Wonderful Lekle, landscape. Dafur. Yeah. And I learned enough away. Oh, you did? I did, I did, I did. Oh, you got friends there? Oh, I plenty. Male friends? Male. Okay. Sam, what are you trying to suggest? No, I want to know how you learned the language. No, because we were very, we were young. Yeah. You know, and we had a lot of time on our hands. Yeah. And so we... 
and we're the young boys down. You yeah, know, defining the defining the way things you, are done. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we're partying like hell. Yeah, which which songs? Remember any of those oh, songs? Oh, all the uh, sixty and seventy songs. Yeah. You know, James Brown was the thing then. James Brown, you know, <laughs> and because a lot of people didn't know how to dance James Brown. Yeah. Earlier in Achimota, when we were going to have a party, yeah, I used to go to the common room and charge either a tin of milk or a tin of sardine, uh -huh. and I'll do five minutes of James Brown. Uh -huh. Then you pay me and go. Thank you. Uh, so I carried it all to national <laughs> service. <laughs> No. Okay, so you yeah. lived one year in Ho before you came it. back and then you joined then the Foreign I joined Service. The foreign How did you get into the Foreign Service? Well, you apply. I mean, you know, in those days, job opportunities were plenty. So you were, you were, you uh, were specific, you were deliberate in going into the Foreign Service. You see, the opportunity I had doing a lower level of diplomacy as a student leader had given me a taste. You know, in many of the conferences I was attending as a student leader, because most of the leaders didn't speak both languages, it was easy for me to bring together the African group mm -hmm. and to sort of direct yes. their, their thinking on the solutions. The power of language. And it was, it was, in some of the times you travel like a Commonwealth meeting, they would give you an award to tour the whole of East Africa. This was all in second year. Mm -hmm. So it had given me an idea what I would like to do. And I, I had so many choices. Wow. So eventually, I was convinced to, to join the service by some of those who were on the panel. Right. Particularly Ambassador Victor Beho. Okay. He called me and advised me that I should join the service. And I don't regret it. Nice one. Because, and I told so, them I wanted to go and do my master's. But at the panel, they told me that as soon as I joined, they would send me to Lagos. And that's what they did. So you joined which year? 76. 76. Six. Still to a champo. Charlie, yeah. that's <laughs> when, you know, so I went back to campus and as a former student leader, I had a lot of work to do. Wow. To help them from behind. Uh-huh. You know, that's, that's when young politicians have started. Papo Suan Kamai and Aji Alima and them. Tukofi Tutumbi and them. Oh, okay. So that's when they had come yeah, the yeah, first year. That's right, that's and you were the pro, so Charlie. you offered t tutorials. And, and it was easy. I was working. So yeah. I was earning a salary. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have to take a front seat. That's true. So, you know, it's very easy to sit in your room and, and you know, give advice and encourage Push them. the buttons, yeah. And it was, it was good. But of course, as a, now as a foreign service officer, I couldn't be seen actively agitating against the government because as now I had to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. So how many years were you uh, in the foreign service? 34. In total? 34 years? Right. Wow. We'll do the count. <laughs> 34 years. Right. In fact, I have a, 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 a citation to that effect. Oh, good. Inside, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see that. Right. Now tell me, what were your initial um, engagements in the foreign service? See, I was very fortunate. When I came back from studying in Paris in 79, there was a transition. June 4th, September, so uh, Jerry Rollins was going to hand over to Lehman. And we had to brief them. Then I was deputy chief of protocol. My boss was Ambassador Kito. And he kindly took me along to the briefing sessions. So I was watching how the transition is done and all that and all that. And the man took to me very quickly. Hmm. So after about three or four briefing sessions, he instructed that I should join him on all of his African trips. Whoa. So very early in my career, I was on the presidential jet. <laughs> and he traveled with the man to wherever he went in Africa. <clears throat> Don't you get the feeling that he also fell in love with you because of his own background you in see, language. You see, where I studied in Paris. Samoa? Yeah. But it was IAP. ENA. It called National Administration. Institut International Administration. But if by the second semester, you had an average of 68 to 70%. You were automatically enlisted to the Sorbonne program for the DSS, which mm -hmm. is the MPhil. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you join the Sorbonne class 
by, by, by dint of what you have done in, in, in your class. That's how we all, I wasn't the only one. <laughs> so President Liman was a very good friend of Dr. P. V. B. Amsa, Professor Ansa. Okay. They, they studied at the same time in Paris. Yeah. And Professor Ansa was my, my, my special subject mentor. Mm -hmm. So once he knew that, that, that was my friend. There was a bond. And you know, he was very intellectual and very Pan Africanist. I'm talking about uh, Liman, President. Liman, yeah. Very so, intellectual. Very yes. intellectual. He spent nights, you know, philosophizing about Africa. As a young boy, I was enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so whenever we traveled, I'd go and sit by his side and enjoy the whiskey with him. That's how I started my career on the high On the high. On street. The high. On the high. Because you met people there, foreign affairs, who were there. Who were better than me, who, who hadn't had the privilege yeah. of getting. You see, because our job involves mostly negotiating. And if you see it at the summit level, early in your career, you can only, it can only be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. Because subsequently, and then when you are stuck with the president, mm -hmm. you are compelled to produce the kind of draft speeches and briefs because you, maybe you are the only person on that. Okay, so you started writing speeches early, or contributing to early, speeches? Early, early. Nice. In fact, there's a, there's a, there are two paragraphs in Professor Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Manson's book Manson, yeah. about this, you should read it. I enjoy it. I was talking oh. about how I was writing speeches for President Liman and how I was contributing to the diplomatic work and you should, you should read it. We'll do. We'll yeah, do. Yeah, it's a, so it was, it's, you know, I should be into high speed. Mm -hmm. uh, so your, your entry would now meet President Liman, yeah. um, whose, whose um, governance did not last more no. than two and a half years. No. So we'll say it was short-lived. Right. Uh, but we would like to know what happened after Liman was uh, brutally overthrown by Jerry Rollins in uh, 81. Um, but we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll come back to Ambassador D.K. Ose to tell us how he welcomed the um, <laughs> 81 coup <laughs> uh, and whether he indeed he worked with them. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprints, and I'm here with Ambassador D.K. Ose. So far, I mean, he's taken us from um, a Kumasi boy, a privileged one at that. I don't know about that. <laughs> to Accra Archwater School, to University of Ghana, Legon. And it looks like, look, this man had things cooked already before he got there. You know, what the Bible refers to as pl pleasant places. The man had pleasant places awaiting him. Now he gets into the foreign service and some way somehow things happen in his favor he gets to be working with the president president uh, dr hila liman yeah. and um, so you are with he liman uh, not as a political appointee no, of no, course no, no. Foreign uh, service just service. doing your foreign service right. work and liman himself had worked the foreign yes, service yes he, he left when he was a2 i mean he had just one step to become an ambassador okay you know in the foreign service you don't just get promoted mm -hmm. you take exams after three years or five years, so when you are due, then you go and take an exam. And then he was he, had, he was almost at the top. Wow! So he knew me from there, but he didn't know me that well because oh. I was a small fry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he loved working with you. He did. We got on fabulously. And then one day you woke up, and then a certain Jerry Rollins that you knew from Achimota School was was had to take was his very, power again. Very traumatic. Very traumatic, you say. You know, on the night of thirty first, I remember very well. There's a friend of mine who was having a birthday party around Kaneshi. Remember his name? Oh, it's a lady. Okay. Uh, the father used to be in the foreign service. Oh, okay. A certain Miss Boati. I've forgotten the first name. And let me pass. I wouldn't mention the two people I'm talking about. But there were two people who became very active participants in the 31st Zambia Revolution. Mm -hmm. Later, who were with me that night. Mm -hmm. And we were at the party when we had can short so I then lived in North Kanishi. Mm -hmm. So I said, Look, since you live on campus, let me take you home. And they spend the time criticizing the revolution and this and that. 
and they were very worried. They so, were they were younger than you. They, they were the older, both no, we are both older than me. And they were still in school. No, they were on campus. Oh, they lived on campus. They did. That's why I said I'd rather not. But they were with me and very critical. But later they became very active. Is it PV or B? No, 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 no. PV was on from KNUST. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. PB was okay. No, because you said they just lived there, so that's no, why. No, no, no. Okay. PB was a, was a good student leader. Mm. But anyway, so thirty first work resumes. I go to work. Then there's a lot of heat because the sub region is not yet ready to fully comprehend what are What's taking place in, this, yes. in the country. And in fact, some of our neighbors were very antagonistic to what had taken place. Yeah. Particularly Nigeria, Nigeria. and Togo. Mm. And even Burkina, the beginning, they didn't quite understand what was going on. But as we do in our job, immediately we had to constitute a delegation to visit the neighbors to explain to them what, what had taken place and at the time, who was the head of state of Nigeria? Uh, the man uh, with nothing. Shagari. Yeah. She Sh was. Sh I Shagari. Think, I think. Okay. Ah, we, we, was, came it first? Bangida? was it Was it? No, no, no. We are doing Shehu came first. Oh, it's obviously Shehu Shagari. Shehu. Shehu. Mm. And they. Well, Shagari was overthrown in 83. Oh, okay. By and the, he and the man were getting on fabulously. Oh, lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful so, man, too. Oh, Shagari. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very calm. Calm. Very calm disposition. What is, yeah. um, you know, the, well seated. Yes. So, there I found myself again being on a delegation. To Nigeria. Having worked closely with the man to the whole of Francophone West Africa and, and the rest of the countries to explain to them why President Liman had been overthrown. Did so, Rollins notice, take any notice of you? He knew me. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. But did he recognize this is DK herself from actual? Oh, Christian? yeah. Because he was very close to my brother Albert. Mm -hmm. They were very close friends. Okay. And then I was in the Africa Bureau. And when you go on these trips, usually, the director or the shadow officer for that country accompanies the president. So I was in charge of West Africa. So I went and very quickly, the delegation then had to go and brief the president. And invariably, when we went on such a delegation, we didn't take interpreters along. So once there was no interpreter, no, I would opt to do, that, yes. to do it for the leader of the delegation and invariably they want a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the host head of state so on our return the leader would require my notes to brief the head of state or he would say come along and let's go and brief the head of state so again very quickly you know it became easy for president rollins to he, he didn't quite understand. He just thought I was being an interpreter. He didn't understand that I was a normal foreign service officer <laughs> who from time to time acted as an interpreter because it was convenient. Yeah. And so some of those meetings, it was better to have a foreign service officer That's than a correct. professional interpreter. That's correct. So very early in the day, I started traveling with President Rawlings to everywhere he went in Africa. Mm -hmm. What did you think about him at the time? You know, I always like to uh, restrict myself to the foreign policy domain. Okay. For obvious reasons, because. But was he a wicked senior? You know how we yes, used to yes, 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 uh, yes, yes, yes. This senior is yeah, wicked. that I would say because you know, Nachmata swimming is compulsory. Yeah. Look at the bush boy from Kumasi. <laughs> and as soon as we came to Nachmata, I was supposed to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to the swimming classes with Gadget's Beckhouse, where he was. Mm -hmm. Every time I went to the swimming pool, this, this man would try to sink me. Just push my head in. But he didn't know he was helping me. So, ahead of all my Kumasi boys, I started swimming very early. Because wow. I had no choice. Yeah. Because Jerry was, you know. <laughs> was he doing that alone or with his friends? Oh, he, he alone. <laughs> and you know, bad boys, they used to send small small boys go and buy cigarettes for them. Uh, he and who? Oh, he and my brother Albert. <laughs> so, uh, at that time, 
Yes. They, they were never caught, but I was never caught going to buy cigarettes for them. Wow. So you need to go to the village there. Anumle. Anumle, Anumle a, 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 village. A, a, a Christian yes. village. A Christian village. Uh, wow. And run away and come back. So, <laughs> no, Jerry knew me. Okay. Jerry knew me. And so, you know, good thing about him is that he, has, he appreciates intellectual capacity. Mm, yeah. Yeah. He showed in his, in his, uh, the, the structure of his government. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And he would, you know, when he asked you to do work, some work for him, you did it well, he would appreciate it. Because I look back and look at the, the, the constitution of the membership of the PNDC. Right. And I'm, I'm looking at the intellectual weights. Right. Uh, I thought it was something uh, to be proud of at you the know, time. That lot, the one I worked closest with was Captain Chikata. Okay. Because he, was, he had responsibility for security and foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, was, it was the one that I knew best. Oh, okay. Yeah, but PB was my friend. So mm -hmm. we would talk away from work and all that. About this, but so, Captain knew what he was doing. So this will be the f early days of Rollins. Mm, that's right. Um, for how long were you closely connected? Uh, the first batch from eighty-one December to eighty-four. Uh -huh. Then, fortunately, I went away to Paris. That was my first posting. Okay. And I was away from eighty-four to eighty-eight. So I only resumed when I came back in eighty-eight to continue to travel with him. Hmm. Uh, but at the time, you were energized to do that. You mean to do what? To, to work with him. At the foreign service. Foreign officer. service, yeah. Your duty is to serve the government mm -hmm. of the day. Yeah. When it gets to a point when you have violent disagreements with the government, walk you away. You have to walk away, yeah. And also remember that what you are called upon to defend invariably is in the area of foreign policy. Okay. And since the implementation of foreign policy in Ghana doesn't vary too much. As a foreign service officer, it is not too difficult to take a certain stance. Even though there were times when I'm sure that many foreign services, like the Buzia uh, dialogue policy with South Africa, like the time the judges were murdered in Ghana, if you had posts, how are you going to explain this? Or if you are attending a human rights conference? So, but, but my position had always been that as a foreign service officer, you must stay away from making any public pronouncements okay. on politics. Super. And I kept to this. So you worked with, you worked, okay, you played your role right. um, until 92? Then I went to Dhaka. No, I went to Conakry on posting. On posting, which year is that? 92. Or 92. This uh, would be before the elections. That's right. Ah. So, but you somewhere. wanted to be part of the election. No, because I couldn't campaign. Oh, you couldn't? Foreign service officers. But you had made friends within the PNDC, which then... Oh, close become, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, NDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why some people were uncomfortable with your role, um, um, which you later had to play yeah, for? Yeah, but I, I, I didn't understand them. <laughs> why they assumed that I belong here or there, you understand? Yeah, we'll come and talk about that yeah, some yeah, other yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, and, and but you, you right. just enjoyed doing your I work. I just enjoyed doing my work. And how was Kunakri at the time? Brilliant. Brilliant. Had they forgiven us for overthrowing Nkrumah? But they loved Ghana. Yeah. And, you know, at the time, our embassy in Moravia had been closed because of the war. So they gave us responsibilities for Moravia. Mm. So I used to travel to see just Taylor and to bring all the warlords story I'll tell some of them I'll tell you when they had to go through the bush and at wow. 3 a.m. and they strip you naked and so on and so forth anyway then we had Gambia mm -hmm. also as part of our concurrent accreditation and then Yaya Jame came. came and two days after I was asked to go and see him oh. right and then there was a bit of instability in Guinea-Bissau so we also had Guinea-Bissau so it was a very busy period. Well, that's 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 and a very accomplished life as a. It's enjoyable. You know, uh, as a foreign service officer. Foreign service officer. And Rollins became chairman of Echoes, President Rollins. Yeah, that's correct. So he was the one negotiating all the P 
peace agreements them so yeah, come the yeah. 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 so I was flying into Accra all the time I had to go into Morovia to go and see this person on this day and come back and brief captain and Wow okay. so that's it um, well, you know so you you did so well um, working within that space right. and under Jerry Rollins as a, a PNDC leader right. and head of state and right. um, that would define uh, some of the your experiences as a foreign service, service officer. officer we want to thank you for um, taking us through this journey we will come again we'll come Good. again Good. Uh, because there's more to share with us so yeah. we'd like to end this one here and then when we come back we'll definitely want to know how you got into the Kufour government <laughs> it's very important <laughs> ambassador Dikio said thank you very much Sam, you're a big <laughs> man <laughs> you are the biggest <laughs> man and thank you for watching this is the footprint my name is samuel atamensa see you next week <laughs>